Since I have covered both of these characters in videos multiple times, I think we can cut out the useless crap like, oh, they can destroy buildings, they tank nukes. We can move on to the meat and potatoes. To start, Monster vs. Godzilla has gotten some pretty interesting, more cosmic scale lore as of recent according to the Monarch show, the novelizations, and the author of that novelization, Gregory Keyes. If those of you who have not watched the video where I compared him to the One Punch Man series are watching this, we have such statements as Hollow Earth generating the amount of gamma rays you see only from pulsars, aka supermassive black holes, to even a gamma ray burst. Considering Greg Keyes directly did say that of all the natural phenomena in the physical universe, Godzilla's atomic breath is the strongest. This would not really contradict Ghidorah's gravity beams or even Mechagodzilla's proton scream if you're one of those idiots who insist that MG is stronger. Since it directly stated it doesn't include weapons and Ghidorah's straight up called unnatural so it wouldn't extend to him either. And that same statement compared the temperature of his to the surface of a blue star so you could easily infer that he's directly calling legendary star level, at least. We also have the numerous statements that the Hollow Earth's vile vortexes are so mighty that they are compared to a black hole and bend space-time, which as we know, a holding back, weakened legendary was able to blast through during GVK. He, Kong, Scar King, Shimu, and Ghidorah also have statements of being able to destroy planet Earth, and we know that MonsterVerse Earth contains the super ecosystem and that really strong Hollow Earth stuff. And if you don't believe that, at the very least, GVK directly stated that the energy output of Hollow Earth, which counts at the very least planet level, all the way up to dwarf star level, is only almost Godzilla level. Legendary is going to kind of need everything he can get. So we'll just say he's solar system level just off of that stuff, just to be generous. How does that compare to Heisei? If we use the Batra fight, it's stated Batra could one-shot a meteor that was going to obliterate Earth so quickly and so violently that nothing would happen to Earth's ecosystem. This calcs all the way up to small star level. Mothra and Batra are equal, and yet we have a direct statement that they are incapable of hurting Godzilla at all. And we know that's basically true, since Batra spam blasts Godzilla and is unable to hurt him at all. He also basically two shots Batra twice. Mothra heals him, so that explains why he doesn't just die the first time. But Godzilla can basically kill Batra in two hits. This is despite Mothra and Batra having such a long fight with like little injury that the two of them bought enough time for Godzilla to walk from Mount Fuji to Tokyo, despite the fact we know that Godzilla's walking speed is about 60 miles per hour. And also, he was attacked by the military, which also probably took him a little more time, and yet both were basically undamaged from their own fight, despite being equal. Using that sort of upscaling, you could easily get Godzilla to star level, if not large star level, already, in his 92 form. Then, you have the 10,000 times multiplier for Mechagodzilla's plasma grenade, which he takes multiple shots of with less damage than Mechagodzilla's other attacks. And while at first he was inferior to Mechagodzilla, he just adapted and grew stronger than him by the time of their second fight. So Heisei's already solar system level well before Space Godzilla appears, and you don't even need to do that much squinting or multiplier stacking to get it. But of course, Heisei has statements of being stronger than his past version, Showa Godzilla. Showa Godzilla, by the end, has some pretty insane multipliers and upscaling. For example, the feat of the Garugan nuke that obliterated Planet Peaceland, which chucks all the way up to large star level, is considered irrelevant to even just the terror beasts. The terror beast that late Showa Godzilla and Zone Fighter could rip apart. We could also just see the growth just in the battle against Gigan. When he first faced Gigan, 
he was losing his life even by the time they fought again and enhanced guy again and megalon got thrashed by godzilla in a 2v1 then by the time of zone fighter godzilla didn't even need his atomic breath to destroy guy again he could just beat him to death with his tail the mecha godzilla fight also demonstrates this well again at first he is about equal if not lesser than mecha godzilla mecha godzilla with then later withstands 10 times his own ap which matched godzilla's only for godzilla to then destroy mecha godzilla after he got the lightning power up mecha godzilla then gets enhanced armor and five times more powerful weaponry and godzilla destroys him even worse so much so he really just needs titanosaurus to even stand a chance this is despite the fact the mecha godzilla exists in a showa black hole with the black holes of the showa and heisei era since well they are technically the same verse it's just that the godzilla timeline is different are made up of the mass of hundreds of giant stars collapsed into a, one space. This means that their total energy output would be 2.6 megafo. By comparison to legendary Godzilla's best stuff, the strongest gamma ray bursts ever are only in the kilofo. You could maybe hype the strongest in nature statement to the collision of two black holes, which would be far higher in energy, but that doesn't really seem to be the implication. They more seem to be inferring like a mini gamma ray burst, especially with the stuff in Monarch. We know that Showa King Ghidorah is quote unquote invincible in space, and we know that this lore carries over to his Heisei counterpart because Heisei Ghidorah is literally an enhanced clone of Showa Ghidorah. So he should just be stronger. We know he's bigger and stronger. So the statements of him being a larger, stronger clone are true. And Heisei Godzilla in his 100 meter form is able to combat and overcome Heisei Ghidorah, which Showa Godzilla is afraid to fight Showa Ghidorah in a one-on-one. -on -one. Although granted, it did take Godzilla's full power to do that. Heisei Ghidorah did withstand that, but he was put flat on his ass. And then the blue spiral ray, Godzilla's full power attack, decapitated him so you could easily just say it's a one shot above the nuclear pulse later on there are statements that batra and mothra are considered the quote new strongest monsters even in their larva form this may not make the most sense considering godzilla did thrash them but remember heisei godzilla grows more powerful over time and According to the timeline, he fights Mothra and Batra an entire year later. You could easily just say Godzilla got more powerful over time. And if you want proof of this, it's stated in Mecha King Ghidorah is several times more powerful than base King Ghidorah. And yet Godzilla did not need the nuclear pulse or spiral ray to defeat it. This could simply just be attributed to his growth. We know that MKG was designed with armor in order to combat Godzilla's atomic breath. So Godzilla grows quite quickly and stronger over time, meaning that Mothra and Batra's larva putting up a performance against him isn't really an anti-feat. Also, Batra consistently trading blows with Godzilla even when they hit the bottom of the ocean is thus no outlier. The adult forms are very much implied able to one-shot enemies that are on par with the larva forms via a Toho What If guide where Batra is put up against a giant version of Megalon. It's mentioned Megalon could even tear into Batra, but the moment he turns into an adult, it's over. Yet, Godzilla, when he shows up again, eradicates Batra easily, and Mothra needs to save him. And even as a duo, they need to rely on hacks and staying the hell out of Godzilla's firepower in order to have, even have a chance. So if you apply a typical one-shot of about 10 times, now Heisei Godzilla is about 28.6 megafo at least compared to Monsterverse Godzilla's kilofo in base. But what about amps? After all, if he's fighting such a powerful radioactive monster, you know, maybe legendary Godzilla can grow stronger too. He can absorb energy, right? He did it with the nuke. He's going to do it for his new pink form. He might even become burning MV. Or for you stupid Roblox kids, Thermo. Well, there is a problem. MV's burning form is very brief. His nuke amped form is unstable. And Godzilla Rose slash Evolve currently has no feats. There are toys that say it's more powerful than anything before, but there's also stuff that seems more official for GVK that says base GVK is stronger than ever. Yet we know that at the very 
bare minimum Mecha Godzilla is below King Ghidorah. And so is Kong. Kong is considered trash to Ghidorah, so... And that's a more healthy Kong, who hasn't been eating Skull Carler shit for, like, years. So yeah, that's inconsistent bare minimum. And we also know there's just statements of KOTM Godzilla being stronger. In base, too. But let's just give it to him anyway, right? Let's see he can turn burning Godzilla at will. How strong is the four? Could it close the gap? Well, if we use one-shot gaps and generous statements, despite uh, Godzilla guy's interview with Greg Keyes trying to reduce the statement to mere hyperbole, if he is the statement that Ghidorah got 100 times more powerful after absorbing energy, and base Ghidorah was equal to or above base Godzilla, then that 8.8 kilofo would become 880 kilofo. This same 100 times amped Ghidorah stomped, but did not one-shot nuke amped Godzilla, so you could downscale him from this. Then, he bites onto Godzilla and drains his power, which I guarantee is more powerful than just a random power grid in Boston. So applying that, you could easily get Ghidorah getting possibly another couple hundred times stronger onto that. And then Burning Legendary proceeds to be unfazed by his attacks and kill him in three hits. He does basically one-shot him though, it's just Ghidorah was A, regenerating, and B, different parts of him were being erased. So based on that, you can probably get Burning Legendary up to about 8 or 10 mega foe. So Burning Legendary can compete with maybe, can maybe compete with Heisei Godzilla up to 1992. Then 93, or rather later 92 according to the timeline. Again, there is that 10,000 times atomic breath reflection. If you don't believe the statements from Mechagodzilla, the plasma grenade is stated to be an upgrade of the fire mirror, which has numerous 10,000 times reflection statements. At maximum, you can maybe use the apex statements from Mechagodzilla versus Godzilla to say that Godzilla could take 2,000 times his own AP. But that seems inconsistent with all the statements that Godzilla is stronger than Mechagodzilla, at least at his best. If we lowball the fuck out of Heisei after this, we then have Virodan getting twice as strong being equal to Godzilla, and then them combining becoming double the strength, even though it should probably be four times, at least. But we also know that Godzilla's Red Spiral Ray is considered the most powerful beam attack ever shot up to that point, which would put it above Super Mecha Godzilla's Plasma Grenade. We know that Super Mecha Godzilla has double effectiveness on all weaponry, that includes the Plasma Grenade. So that means that he hit base Godzilla with 20,000 times his own AP per shot, and he hits Super MG with 4 or 5 blasts, meaning it would take an attack 80 to 100,000 times more powerful than base Heisei to put him on the ground and even then Mechagodzilla had to keep barraging Godzilla for upwards of 10 minutes straight in order to temporarily defeat him. He wasn't even dead, he was just on the ground beaten. Then he gets the nuclear fusion with Fire Rodan, gets stronger than that Mechagodzilla and just obliterates it. Granted, with multiple attacks, and he was pushing his body to its limit at that point, but the fact he was able to maintain it, and either through just being raw fucking beast, or his regeneration, or his insane durability, taking the Spiral Ray, the backlash of the Spiral Ray, Heisei already stomps by this point, going later is just overkill. But we'll just address it anyway. We know that Mogera was built to kill this Godzilla. And we know that there's detailed schematics planning for that exactly. So we know for a fact that Mogera is stronger than Mecha Godzilla. How much? Stated upwards of three times per eye. So six times total AP. This is consistent with the manga where Mokara one-shots a rebuilt Mecha Godzilla, and movie guides show that Mecha Godzilla was already rebuilt, and they use Mogara anyway, and call it the ultimate anti-Godzilla weapon. Despite all this, he literally can't even make Space Godzilla flinch. He can't even tickle Space Godzilla. And then Space Godzilla toys with it and destroys it. Granted, it's also, you know, directly shown that 
base Godzilla at this point doesn't really scale his face Godzilla. He gets pretty badly thrashed and almost killed even in lesser time than Super Mecha Godzilla, mind you. But blasts of the atomic breath are able to actually harm Space Godzilla a little bit. We know that Space Godzilla the entire time was absorbing Godzilla's energy. We know that energy amps in the Heisei series are directly proportional to how much stronger the Godzilla gets. 89 Godzilla was hit with 200 times stronger nukes. Heisei Godzilla 100 meters is 200 times stronger. So Space Godzilla got hit with Godzilla's power. So he got a Godzilla amount times stronger. And Heisei didn't get one shot by that. What about his famous feet? Even a single cell of his went through one of those mega faux black holes, even absorbing its energy, and then went on to consume multiple supernovas. But how many cells are in Space Godzilla? As I previously calculated, with the help of my friend Dynomania, shout out to her channel down below, Space Godzilla would have trillions of cells. So much, in fact, that his body would have an at least galaxy level of power to it. And that's before he uses Godzilla's own strength to amp himself. Godzilla then also uses this back on his cosmic clone in their later fight, so at the very bare minimum, he scales to a stronger space Godzilla, at least in round two. Note, he does this in base, despite the misconception he does it for his red beam. He does it in base, and then uses the red beam on top of this base. And of course, then three shots, a half power space Godzilla. Cosmic amped base Godzilla is about equal, if not winning, against half power space Godzilla. This is despite space Godzilla and him being in an arms race for who can get the bigger amps on top of each other. Mogera in this part has been enhanced, so he just scales higher. There's no anti-feat here. The red spiral rays multiplier would be the lowest of low balls double, but via the nuclear fusion, we calculated it could be as high as 76 to 430,000 times of an increase. The 76 may seem the most consistent, so we'll just use it for now. So on top of a galaxy level base form, he now has a 76,000 times attack. So therefore, we have multi-galaxy level Heisei versus at maximum, pretty high solar legendary. But what about, you know, things beyond the finite? What about higher dimensions, infinite power, stuff like that? I mean, both of them have statements for it, so let's go over it. We'll do legendary first just to get it out of the way. According to Mechagodzilla's POV in the GVK novel, its state in Hollow Earth is a boundless unending source of energy. Godzilla scales. It's also called the power of the universe. That doesn't really mean anything, but fuck it, we'll just give it to him. We'll just use that as consistent with the statements in the DC crossover that they are the creatures of the monsterverse, and there's like three or four universe destroying statements for that crossover. Recently, we also have it being said that Mechagodzilla was a threat to both of their worlds, aka dimensions. Okay, that's pretty good. That should stop any finite scaling Heisei has, right? Well, it's not so simple. Keep in mind, again, Showa scaling. There's at least two, if not three, fourth dimensional spaces in the canon Zone Fighter show. Zone Fighter is even able to combat a creature that can spawn a fourth dimensional net that raises the dimensionality of the neighboring area, possibly the universe, all the way to the fourth dimension. And Zone Fighter, without even his strongest attack, cuts right through it like butter. Zone Fighter is considered equal to Godzilla in 1973, let alone 75, or Dam, which takes place 20 years later. Dam Godzilla is weaker than end of series Showa Ghidorah, since he needs help from Gorosaurus, Anguirus, Mothra, and Kumunga to help beat him. And again, he's scared to face him alone. Dam Ghidorah is weaker than Heisei Ghidorah. And we also have many, 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 many statements that Heisei Godzilla is stronger than Showa Godzilla. Not convinced. Well, we also know a few other things are canon to the Heisei series. The Rebirth of Mothra trilogy and Orochi the Eight-Headed Dragon. Orochi directly shows gods who are able to create the Big Bang itself. The Big Bang created an infinite, infinitely expanding universe that can contain multiple 4D spaces outside of the space-time of the normal universe, contained within the infinite cosmos, by the way. And Rebirth of Mothra insists on this infinite universe, yet Deskidora 
is stated able to destroy the universe. At least if he got the power of Earth, which Mothra Leo did. So Mothra Leo, in base, should be universal. But again, this universe has multiple fourth dimensional spaces and is infinitely large. So Leo is already at a match for the scaling we've given to Legendary with DC, with DC and novelizations. Mothra Leo then gets three times stronger for his rainbow form, which is equal to Kid King Ghidorah. It's stated that Cretaceous Ghidorah is weaker than any adult Ghidorah, so you could even scale Showa Ghidorah off of him. At the very least, he's several orders of magnitude weaker than his adult form. Orders of magnitude are ten times increases, several meaning any number from three to nine. If we mid-ball to six, that means a million times more powerful. Notice, I've been highballing Legendary and midballing Heisei this entire time. Armor Leo is three times that, and yet in an official guide, it's directly stated that Mothra cannot pierce Mechagodzilla's diamond armor. Godzilla, bare minimum with the red spiral ray, can. And that Mothra would need to get inside the mech in order to do damage. Against Space Godzilla, they tried to basically say use the strat Godzilla did, which would amp Mothra massively, and so is not an anti feat. And it's also said Destroyer would just kind of one shot Mothra Leo, and that Mothra Leo's best chance is to target Transcending Fate onto Destroyer's chest, which is a hack, and so not an AP difference at all. But wait, there's more. We also have Space Godzilla using Super Gravity which, as proven by the comparison to Void Ghidorah, is higher dimensional. We also have other higher dimensional things existing in the Showa and Heisei-verse. This would at least support more 4D, if not 5D, and higher scaling. Super Gravity goes all the way from 4D up to 11D, but I don't see any consistency for 11D at the moment. Maybe in some time we'll get there. I mean, after all, there's also a statement that Space Godzilla transcends the laws of physics. So who knows? He just might damn well. Which is a similar statement to Godzilla Ultima. Speaking of Ultima, Toho in a 2022 guide said that Godzilla's singular point is a singular part of the Godzilla canon. If one interprets this to a universe or timeline, granted it was a pun, but eh, it might still apply anyway, then Ultima's at very least infinite multiverse and higher dimensional realm would be equal to singular parts of the Godzilla canon, which you can interpret as a universe, which again, even Deskador scales to, let alone full power Heisei Godzilla. If that's not enough for you, it's directly stated by Toho in the preview for Godzilla Aftershock, directly hyping up 2014 even, that Marvel's comics were thought to be a postquel of the Showa series. The comics even kind of hint at Showa Godzilla's history and directly cite Marvel Godzilla as being 1954 himself. So Marvel Godzilla is Showa Godzilla. Heisei is stronger according to the same Toho that owns Marvel Godzilla and said that he and Showa are one and the same being. But I hear you say, well Marvel's so big and mean, he can't be Showa Godzilla. Well, it's actually shown in a preview guide for Godzilla 84, and that Showa Godzilla may have returned as a bad guy at a larger 100 meter size. Kinda seems like hyping up the Heisei era, doesn't it? So yeah, bare minimum, Heisei is 2, 3 times low multiversal. You can get into multiversal plus, upscaling off of Marvel, or you know, the infinite universe that contains multiple 4D spaces. You could get up to 5D, off of the super gravity, possibly 6D, if you take that Space Godzilla statement literally, Legendary has no chance.